Hey, Ulf. I don't know how convincing I will be, but I have been in this dialogue before. And it's hard to know where a person is coming in. If we go all the way back to the very basics of the topic, uh, then I'm pretty sure that you will be arriving in the conversation past that point. But I'll do it anyway, and you can elect where your beginning is. The first point is that I'm not talking about either or at an extraordinarily basic level of where the fiction comes from at all. Uh, in that case, we would be dealing with either the game master provides the entirety of the fiction as such, story or no story, just the entirety of the fiction as an existing phenomenon, while the players basically sit there and receive. And then the converse of that is that the game master is effectively you know, flapping their hands uselessly while everybody uh, provides everything um, in a kind of improvisational flurry of content. Um, and neither of those, I think, is relevant to what we're talking about. So when I say either or, I'm not talking about that either or. We're going to take it as a given that the fiction as such, that there is a fiction at all, uh, produced by what we do um, is collaborative and so certainly you know, different people are saying at different times what happens what I do what this happens then this happens stuff like that so first and foremost the fiction in and of itself is collaborative and composed of different people speaking and different people listening and responding throughout all right so that's sort of the beginning statement. So then the next statement is, now we're talking about events as proposed, I do this, in which case a person we know cannot just say it and then that's the case. It has to be accepted. It has to be heard and acted upon and confirmed. And so I'm not talking about GM versus player at the moment. I'm talking about anybody. So, therefore, uh, situationally, somebody is saying, uh, I'm going to attack the guard. Or, situationally, next morning. All of these, whether it's an action like the first, or an entire setup of the fiction to proceed like the second, uh, these phenomena are said, and they are confirmed by reception and response. And I have a whole thing about different people having the authority or responsibility or credibility for different categories of this kind of thing. That's not really very important right now. I'm talking now about the acceptance and the confirmation and the response as necessary. So with that in hand, we can see that there's room here for control to creep in. And when I say control, I'm talking about it in the negative sense. Control in the sense of obviating or taking over or uh, grabbing what was designated for one person to have the responsibility for, or for someone to have the responsibility for. But it turns out that through the withholding of the response and confirmation, that you're actually exerting control over it when you ordinarily, well, for lack of a better word, shouldn't. What this means, therefore, is somebody can say in a context uh, in which ordinarily they could say, I throw my axe at the guy. And you would think that the very statement of that kind is the responsibility of everybody present to say, okay, the axe is in the air and we will proceed because you said it and we are occurring in this fiction. We are proceeding in this fiction and what occurs will now occur. You have activated you know, certain rules that we now must apply. Whereas, in many cases, somebody will proceed as if that statement hadn't been made quite like that and might say, well, we're kind of, without even saying so, dial it back a couple of seconds and 
proceed as if you were considering to throw your axe and then give you information. You know, oh, but they look friendly. Or, by the way, that's, you know, he he's not, you know, he's on your side or something like that. And the point being that that dial back in time is unacknowledged. It's just implemented. Now, this relies on what everybody else at the table does. They are, perhaps without knowing it, faced with contradictory uh, instructions. The instruction number one comes from the person who just says, I throw my axe at the guy. And uh, instruction number two is, by the way, he's on your side, which is supposed to be implemented before the axe was thrown and is assuming or dictating even that the decision to throw the axe is underway rather than already made. So, therefore, I'm talking about the way that uh, statements of confirmation and acceptance are manipulable in terms of controlling what another person is doing in contradiction to what was acknowledged or thought to be their right to do those things. Again, it is the reactions and the um, cooperation, even, of the other people around the table are they going to then jump in right away and say oh yeah he looks friendly or yeah well i'm going to tell him this again sort of going with the dialing back in time and proceeding as if that were the case and that the statement i throw my axe at him had been instead the statement of i'm contemplating throwing my axe at him even putting it into a kind of a limbo of, oh, by the way, you meant that as a joke, right? Not as a stated action. Whereas if the rest of the people at the table instead are like, wait, 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 he, the axe is in the air, and the person who had tried to dial it back is kind of left there realizing that they're isolated, and no, the axe is in the air because everybody else at the table is committed to this, and they, they kind of have to live with it. Well, you can see that the room for power struggle there is fairly strong, and it doesn't occur unless we've already created an instability in terms of who says what about what and when that has to be accepted by everybody. So that's a big deal. That's in terms of proposing when and if something is underway. You can apply all the same things to somebody saying next morning. Uh, you know, if the if everybody you know, nods and it's like okay, next morning, and somebody is like wait, 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 no, I mean at midnight I wanted to do this. Well, the question is whether we continue with it being next morning, and forget the whole midnight statement, or whether the person is able to say excuse me, excuse me, no, we we aren't next morning. We are actually at midnight because my character is doing this at midnight. So, again, it's what everybody else at the table seems to be in tune with that one or the other person in these situations kind of has to cave. I'm talking, again, not about just a friendly interaction about what's going to occur and then looking to the person whose job it is in the course of this game and for this group to say such things, to see what they say. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when there's already been an overstep of what one is to say and isn't to say, and is to accept and isn't to accept. And at which point we're thrown out of the rules and into kind of a mob democracy situation where it's going to get resolved uh, through either Everybody going with one way or everybody going with another. Okay, so then we can turn this same principle to the outcomes rather than the implementation of actions and situations, but to the outcomes of actions and situations. And this is often uh, going to receive more attention because it's more obvious when it is clear that the outcome of a situation is going a particular direction and then particular overrides or particular authorities are put into place so that they don't. 
um, or that it went this way in terms of the immediate outcomes. For example, how much damage somebody took or something like that. But the overall outcome of the situation, which is the fight is over and now we get the clue, that kind of thing is fixed or is simply delivered. And it doesn't matter if we look around for the clue or not, we're going to get it. Even if we leave the room and whoever it is who says, you know, no matter what, they're getting out of here with that clue. Even if they say, oh, you trip over something and, oh, look, it's the clue on your way out. Um, these are what I'm talking about in terms of outcomes of situations that uh, are implemented, again, in some cases without the fiction or systemic aspects of the fiction delivering them or uh, making them occur. Instead, it's like, no, they're going to occur, and so I'm sticking it in there. Well, there are all kinds of different angles on this. I want to focus on those implementations of situations and actions and those outcomes of situations and actions that we're going to call plot in retrospect. We look back on it and we say, that was the plot. This happened, so this happened. This happened, so that happened. And then, because of that, this happened. It is, I think, binary and not in the middle at all that either those kinds of plot events in retrospect occurred because they were imposed over the system, over the statements, in fact, independently of what people were doing or not, or whether they really did emerge from what characters announced that they were going to do. When are the characters' announcements, the players' announcements, and the players' control over their characters' limbs this way, that way, you know, the control over what the character does and what system mechanics are invoked by it, when do those actually play a role in those plot events occurring and when don't they? In many cases, what we see is one person having a rather solid control over the implementation of actions and situations and the outcomes of those actions and situations and the motions of the player characters are dressing for it. They are spice when they're fun or funny. Uh, they are uh, cooperative and even exciting if they are dramatically in tune with what's being effectively dictated to occur um, so that player is considered to be a cooperative player or a good player um, by adding the right emotional and uh, sometimes descriptive or, or even um, improvisational elements to what's going on. Uh, as long as what's going on is what that player has sort of intuited or understood is what's supposed to be going on. But the control of the implementation of the situation and action and the control of the situation's overall outcomes is firmly held in hand. And in those circumstances, when somebody does things that are not in tune with that, then those techniques I just talked about, which is basically to obviate them and to dial them back and to draw upon the mob rule at the table so that the person realizes in saying that they have done X, Y, or Z that nobody is in support of this and they kind of go, oh, well, I guess I, my ax isn't in the air. I guess I was just thinking about it. Ha ha, good thing he's on our side. You know, I'll just not do that. Even though they said they did it a couple of minutes ago. So, you can really, I think, tell when this is occurring and this is the way it goes. As opposed to a situation that I like to call readiness in contrast to preparation, uh, whereby everybody at the table is simply operating on what it is that the characters do. And 
I'm not distinguishing between game master and player in this regard because in this case the game master is themselves playing characters too. In those circumstances then the implementation of situations and outcomes is a wavefront. I'm not talking about backstory. I'm not saying everybody gets to improvise every bit of content into play. I'm talking about the implementation of situations and the implementation of actions. And I'm also talking about seeing what happens due to them and then that creates a new wavefront for what occurs next. Given all the things that are fixed in this scenario, such as you know, lurking enemies and other things. All right, I hope that makes some sense that there is a binary state of whether that override or context for what actions and implementations even mean is present or absent. So that's what I'm running with, and I also recommend taking a look at my um, Plot Thickens seminar, if you can stand it, uh, which is very heavily oriented toward many details uh, of how plot emerges through techniques during play. Well, we will continue. Uh, I hope actually to be presenting more about this um, in Jotobori, Gothenburg, in the upcoming month or so, and the debate will continue.